right. Hello, people of YouTube land and those that follow uh, the Cringe Crew di Gaming Discord and uh, me, Ted, and Stallman sometimes on Twitch. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> genuine enough because I blacked out. I blanked out for a minute. Uh, anyway, hello. Uh, this is the Cringe Crew Music. This is not the music podcast. <laughs> Sorry, Jesus this is the Christ. this is the movie review podcast. Uh, I'm special guesting on this, I guess, because I subjected Ted to some movies that I like, and I don't I don't think he liked them as much as I did. <laughs> oh, so, so we're doing both of them in one episode? Okay, oh, yeah, we're, we're, well. we're double we're featuring. F fuck, fuck it, why not? All right. All right, so I guess we can start with the uh, the longer one first. So House, 1977 film, experimental horror comedy movie, directed and produced by Nobuhiko Obayashi. Part of the Criterion Collection, if that means anything to anybody. Um, I guess we can just... What, what do you normally do? Just summarize the uh, plot, summarize some background info on the movie? Background, background info, then Ted does the... Oh, I guess I'll summarize the plot. Uh... <laughs> and then anybody from the cast who's relevant, yeah? Yeah. All right. uh, I can do the background info and stuff. So, uh, somehow this movie was inspired by Jaws. Uh, I, okay. So, basically, Toho Studios approached uh, Obayashi with the suggestion to make a film similar to Jaws. And so, he got a bunch of ideas from his daughter to try to write the script. And then after they greenlit it, it was put on hold for two years because no one wanted to direct it. Uh, he kept trying to promote the film until they just decided to allow him to direct it himself. The movie was filmed on one of Toho's largest sets, where Obayashi shot the film without a storyboard over a period of about two months. It received generally negative reviews, but was a box office hit in Japan. It received a wide release in 2009 and 2010 in North America, where it received more favorable reviews and has since received a cult following. Cult being the uh, emphasis there. By the way, uh, Toho is the studio that makes the Godzilla films. Mm. They're they're a pretty big Japanese film studio. They've they've done a lot of things. Hold on, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, I guess this is the part where we can talk shit about Stallman for five minutes. <laughs> we sure can. Um, you if you want to hit me with cast information? Anybody who's relevant? So, as far as I know, most of the actors in this movie are... This is, like, their first film. They're not really big actors. I'm trying to find a list of them. Here we go. So we've got uh, Kimiko Ikigami as Gorgeous, Miko Jinbo as Kung Fu, Ai Matsubara as Prof, Kumiko Oba as Fantasy, Mako Sato as Mac, Masayo Miyako as Sweet, Eriko Tanaka as Melody, Yoko Minamita as the Ant, uh, Kiyo, Kiyohiko Ozaki as Mr. Keisuke Togo, Saho Sazawa, ugh, sorry, Sazawa as the Father, Haruko Wanabuchi as Ryuko Ima, Ase Kobayashi as the Watermelon Farmer, Tomoko, uh, Tomo, Tomokazu Mi, Miura as the aunt's fiance, Fumi Don as the teacher, and Godigo as themselves. Uh, it appears that that last one there is a Japanese rock band, so all of the members were, were there as themselves. Interesting. Uh, Stallman, since you're impersonating me, hit me with a plot. Okay, so, uh, hold on here. There is no plot, because it's weeb stuff, um, <laughs> and... <laughs> I mean, basically, you're right. There, there's not really And, a uh, it has something to do with, like, mm -hmm. you know, Japanese girls going into a haunted house, you know, weeb stuff, and they die one by one, typical horror movie stuff. Obviously, it's bad. Someone pretty much nailed me. I think that's how I sound on every podcast we've ever fucking done together. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, Mike, I guess start with likes. 
Oh, we're we're not gonna seriously give the plot. We're just we're oh, just gonna I mean, go yeah, with that. If you want to do a more serious plot, every yeah. movie that we've done so far this month, I think I've given a two sentence synopsis, and most of them are just it's a fucking horror film. Just go, just watch it. Like that, that all month long. That's yeah. all we've done. I'll I'll give you the 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 short version. Basically, this girl and her friends go to visit uh the the main girl's aunt's house, and shenanigans ensue. The first half of the movie doesn't really matter. It just introduces you to the characters. Uh, the the real part of the movie is after they get to the house and then they just die in the most bizarre ways possible. And it turns out that the aunt was actually dead and she eats young girls to stay alive or something. Uh, half of this movie is a hallucination, honestly. Like, you watch this movie and you finish it and you're like, did I hallucinate watching that whole thing? How it's, How is any of this real? I don't remember pressing play. It's a fucking fever dream. Like, genuinely, this whole thing is a trippy-ass experience. This is the most bizarre movie that you will ever watch, I guarantee it. Mm, it's up there. Yeah, it, it's up there. It, for sure. <laughs> Top five, the for sure. Least. Top five. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll start with likes. Um, I... Okay. I'm going to mention it again when we dislike things, but there was a, a lot of comedy in this movie. Like, the more, uh, more more attention you paid, the more detail that you wanted, the funnier and dumber shit got. Um, everything was just so fucking out of place, and there was no reason for, like, 98% of this. Even if you're following the, the loose plot that there is, most of it doesn't fucking matter. Like, the first girl that disappears... They're just like, where'd she go? We don't care. She was fat. And they just kind of reference that like 85 times through the movie. Nobody cares. Where, like, you, she eats all the time. Right. You didn't know where this this chick went. You have no idea like where she's going. You didn't know. Like nobody seems to give a single solitary fuck. They're like, yeah, but she bought a watermelon yesterday. Of course she did. She's fat. Like, it just, like what the fuck was going on with all of that? Right. Um. There's just a bunch of, like, floating horrors and things. They're just... The cat just all of a sudden gets beaming fucking eyes, and then sometimes shit happens, and sometimes you're like, oh, fuck, shit happened once before, so it's gonna happen again, and then nothing fucking happens. And in the end, the house just, like, ends up fucking eating people. It's just goddamn stupid, dude. Like, everything's so fucking dumb. It's hilarious. Um, I, I do appreciate, too, the way, like, in a really weird way, this movie keeps you engaged. <laughs> not be, not because it's good, not because it's well thought out, but because you're like, what the fuck is this? That you just can't turn away. Like, you end up laser focusing on everything, and when you laser focus, it makes even less fucking sense. Um, for being as goofy and strange as this movie was, I thought there were a lot of, like, film elements that they did really well. Sound design was pretty solid. For the most part, lighting was good. Um, there were some parts that the lighting just got fucking strange as hell. Set design was solid. I thought the music behind it was mostly okay. Like, the filming of this movie, I think, was done really well. It was just a goofy fucking fever dream. Yeah, I will say it, it like, the f filmmaking aspect, especially, like, special effects-wise, was really ballsy, because apparently the director didn't know how it was going to turn out until, like, he saw it on the editing room. So... There's a good chance where he had to he if it went as bad <laughs> like to like where he couldn't do anything with it, he would have to reshoot the entire movie. So I give props for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean some of the effects were like weird and outdated, but for the most part, like they did their jobs, I guess. For being as confusing of a fever dream as it was, like they, 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 they did alright. Yeah, so my likes for this are definitely the effects. I think for the time, they're, like, pretty good, I would say. And, like, even now, they just kind of come off as, like, really goofy. But I don't think that that means that they're bad. Like, I Apparently think they're... they're deliberately bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still think that they're they're pretty, like, interesting and goofy well, in, like, a good yeah. way, you know? Uh, as for, like, bad things... I'm I'm kind of mixed on this. This movie feels like a YouTube poop, like honestly. <laughs> and I, like it, this feels straight up like a proto YouTube poop sometimes. Like there's really questionable scene transitions. Some of the music kind of gets grating after a little bit. Some of the usage I feel like just gets annoying after a while. 
like you were saying, like when the girls start disappearing, there's like no urgency of them being gone. They just disappear and just kind of like forget about it or shrug it off. There was a four and minute so- scene of them eating fucking watermelon. They're like, hey, two of our friends died, but this is really good watermelon. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, and, and like the first half of the movie is basically nothing. It just introduces you to the characters and then it's just nothing important the the real part of the movie is after they get to the house after that that's only the real important part but like if you were going to include all that earlier stuff at least make it meaningful or somewhat important you know i don't know i this is like a movie that i can only watch maybe once a year it's i i think it's just kind of interesting i don't know that it's necessarily good or bad it it's certainly interesting at the very least um hold on a second i need a beer for this <laughs> uh... stallman has got me nailed, um, dude i will say this uh the lighting was really really nice and uh um, i also like the fact that they definitely kept it simple by naming the characters of their attributes <laughs> so that way you weren't sure of like you know who was who you know obviously kung fu is the chick that does kung fu didn't want to confuse her for gorgeous you know <laughs> or fantasy you know fantasy is the girl that you know fantasizes about things as opposed to the fat chick that eats a lot her name's mac as short for big mac now um <laughs> I'm glad that they kept it very, very simple by having, you know, their names be their uh, attributes. Uh, I also like the fact that um, they do kind of keep you guessing on what's going on. Like, and there is a, for the tiny little bit of like linear consistency that's there. Every time each girl, like, dies, the ant gets younger. And this is before you even find out, like, that's the reason why, like, they're dying one by one is that she's eating them and sucking out their life force to make herself young again. Um, I do think that's really, really cool. Um, also, uh, the different special effects and just creative ways for people to die honestly like the one uh girl gets uh eaten by the freaking well another chick like gets eaten by a goddamn clock another one um gets eaten by a piano and then her fingers are still playing the damn piano um and then also the karate chick she gets eaten by a light like a uh chandelier and then it's like you know, it's just different, like, bad shit ways. Like, how can a house eat someone? Like, what different things of furniture can just, like, <laughs> swallow a person whole? Um, that being said, I do love how goofy and bad shit insane this is. I love how, like, it's just basically, like, a representation of my ADHD brain just all scrambled. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... And that's what I got. It's definitely worth a watch. Like, people should watch this film at least once. Yeah, I, I, I'm with that. That, like, it's goofy and fun enough that, like, you should probably watch it. But I guess my big negative takeaway from this is that just at the end, you just end up asking why. Like, it, just, like can. so when you, it, like, <laughs> you know, we earlier this month, we did Haley's slasher movies, right? So, like, if we... If you examine the why, there isn't necessarily, like, always, like, a firm plot or motive or, right? But, like, you watch it because it's violent and gory and, like, that's just what a slasher movie is. And in this one, I I don't know why for anything. I don't know why they went to the house. I don't know why the, the aunt or whatever was murdering them. I don't know why half of the floating horrors that happened in the house did. I don't understand why a clock was eating them or why the piano was relevant. They're like, oh shit, four of our friends died. Quick, play the piano. And then they just sit around and watch her play the piano. Like there's no purpose or drive for fucking anything. You just end up with this big overwhelming feeling of, okay, but why like it, it just doesn't like there's so much that it's just like why did i put the effort into watching this shit oh <laughs> uh, i guess i could go with my bagot of styles sure just got, 
Hit it. All right. Uh, the first half of this movie is just fucking pointless, and it drags. Like, mm-hmm. as Mike says, like, it's the second half of the movie is when the movie actually starts. Um, and, like, the first half is just, like, it honestly looks like a commercial. It's actually kind of, like, shot like a commercial. And then, oh, like... Yeah. You're right. It's weird. And also when they introduce the characters is weird because they actually just show the picture of them. They go, gorgeous, fantasy, kung fu. And you're just like, is this like a like Power Rangers in- like intro <laughs> or something? <laughs> it, was, it was like so weird and like off kilter. It, it's just like odd. It's odd, but not odd, like kind of like in a good way. Because, like, it drags. It completely... The beginning of this completely drags. Like, I understand, like, there's... It sets up everything. Like, it tells you why they're going to the house. But, like, I think that that could have been cut. And just made a shorter film. And then you could just say, like, why they're at the house with, like, one line of goddamn dialogue. As opposed to, like... The fucking watermelon salesman going, Are you looking for the lady in the house? Oh, you must be the niece of the lady in the house. The house is over there. She's the lady in the house. And she lives in the house. And you guys are here to visit the lady in the house. I'm selling watermelon. Like, it's just, it's, it's just so much and then, unnecessary. And then, and then he talks to, like, the, the teacher that's supposed to, like, you know, be there. And then the watermelon dude just dies. And then the teacher becomes, like, a stack of bananas. <laughs> Oh man, uh, Mike. But, did you have any other dislikes? Any takeaways? I I, I think I basically covered everything. Okay. Yeah, to me, my man, all my dislikes are in the first half. Like to me, like mm. would I say like this movie is like Citizen Kane? No, but like it's goofy enough to be entertaining, and I appreciate a lot of the effort that went into this and the imagination that went into it. Imagination's definitely a word I'd use. <laughs> Well, um, not only did we watch House, uh, we we turned this film into a double feature. So lucky for you, audience on YouTube land or wherever the fuck you're watching or listening. uh, We we watched the second movie. Yeah. So we also watched Tetsuo the Iron Man. This is a 1989 Japanese science fiction horror film directed by Robert Downey Jr. Written, produced and edited by Shinya Tsukamoto. Uh, the film is basically about a Japanese salaryman who w- wakes up to find pieces of metal sprouting from his body after hitting a quote-unquote metal fetishist with his car, and the guy turns into a metal monstrosity as, like, some kind of revenge curse thing. Uh, background on this movie... Uh, really, the only interesting parts is that a lot of this was filmed in an apartment building for the most part. And it seems like there was a lot of, I I guess, conflict between the crew, the director and the actors so much so that a majority of the crew left near the end of filming. And so it was just the director and the actors left over. And so a lot of roles had to be filled in. Uh, it also had a budget of about a hundred thousand dollars, somewhere between hundred thousand to one hundred thirty thousand. Trying to find info on how much it made. Let's see. How much did House make? Ah, uh, I can. Because f- I think see- I, I missed that. <laughs> I'm not seeing in- any info on House. All right, well, whatever. Trying to find info on. Tetsuo the Iron Man, not seeing any info there. Oh well. Uh looks like on release. Um seems to have gotten mostly positive reviews. Kind of like mixed to positive reviews. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh unless someone wants to go more in depth about the plot, I guess we can move on to likes, dislikes, whatever y'all want to do. Uh he go over cast. All right. Uh, this is not a podcast I'm typically in, so uh, <laughs> right. I don't know what I'm doing. So, cast includes uh, Tomo. What the fuck? 
Omorowo Taguchi as the salary man, Kei Fujiwara as the salary man's girlfriend, Nobu Kanaoka as woman in glasses, Shinya Tsukamoto as the metal fetishist. And that's the director, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Now, Masa Musika as a doctor, and Rinji Ishibashi as Tramp. Thorough descriptions for these characters already. <laughs> um, yeah, so, uh, likes, my list is going to be a little shorter for this one. Uh, it also feels like you're on drugs. Like, uh, again, just, <laughs> just absolutely wild to fucking look at. Um, it broke sushi. It, yeah, no, I absolutely did. He got through like 15 minutes of it. And he's like, nah, fuck this. I'm out of here. And that was just, that was that. Um, I, I, I think that like the, they do a pretty good job at, at, at like blending in the, his body transforms to metal. I think there are some points where it looks like egregiously goofy, but when they do like the close up scenes and they slow things down, like the music makes things tense. And like the the visuals on the metal body parts are actually really well done. For being a black and white film, I think the lighting was pretty solid. Uh, everything felt super intentional. It was dark when it was supposed to be dark. It was light when it was supposed to be light. Like I, I think that it was it was a solid film job. Um, and then the the entire movie makes you feel uncomfortable. I, I wouldn't say that they never they, they never really like instill fear. Like a, a more modern horror movie, but they certainly like they really get under your skin. Um Yeah, uh I'd say for all likes on my part, um I kind of felt like this entire movie was like a music video for like nine inch early nine inch nails or like, you know, uh Psalm sixty nine era ministry. And it didn't help that there was kind of like an industrial music soundtrack to this. So to me, it kind of, it's like, I can just picture like the director listening to like, you know, Nine Inch Nails, KDF, wherever the heck that, uh, KDAF, whatever, just some like KDFM. industrial rock. Yeah. Uh, it's just some industrial rock, industrial metal. Or like swans while watching like a David Cronenberg film and just going, I can mend the t I can meld the two while reading a copy of Neuromancer. Um, but I do like the the effects in this. Um, I like the kind of like the intensity of it and the fact that a it does make you uncomfortable and go like, what the fuck is going on? Um, but at the same time, I'm glad that it's not things that are happening necessarily at random, like, there's enough plot to let you know what's going on, however, I will say that that's gonna go past you within your first viewing, because you're still gonna be trying to comprehend what exactly what you're seeing but upon like a second or third viewing like i've went through you can kind of like see that wow there actually is some sort of plot going on here as opposed to just like what's happening <laughs> um i also love the uh battle at the end between the metal fetishist and uh the salary man uh which, by the way, the metal fetishist does appear again in the uh, other two sequels and is given a name Yatsu. Uh, I did find that out. I've seen the sequel, and it's basically like this movie, but done better. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's literally what it... Like, it's more of a remake than a sequel. It's just this, but more <laughs> fleshed out. But, uh... So I guess I equate it to, like, Evil Dead 2. Okay how that's kind of you know it's a sequel but it's also kind of a remake but um yeah that's i wish i had more uh, really explained but i just like how freaking balls to the wall crazy this is like this is definitely a movie that is of its time like would be made in 1989 and or in the early 90s when like industrial rock and industrial metal was like a huge freaking thing and same with cyberpunk 
and uh, the body horror films of David Cronenberg. Like, this was definitely, like, the result of everything that was happening at that time with the director just going, I can just combine all of these and then make a movie that tops them all. Uh, so as for my likes, I, I don't really know where to start with this. I, I love this movie. This movie's fucking wild, dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, the soundtrack for this goes hard as hell. Like, I love industrial stuff, so of course I love the soundtrack for this. Uh, even though it's black and white, I think that works for the movie because I don't know that it would have worked as well if it were in color. I think oh. the black, I think the black and white definitely covers up a lot of like uh, the makeup work. Mm. That if it was like in color, it'd be worse. Yeah, uh, I think that the kind of like makeup effects and stuff are done really well, even though it's literally just like they took a bunch of scrap metal and stuck it onto the guy with double-sided tape. Like, they did a they did a good job for it just being that simple. Like, some of this stuff is just kind of gross, but but I love it. Um, if you're really into body horror stuff, you'll you'll probably really like this movie. It's it's nuts. The just him turning into this giant metal freak and then the fight at the end. It, it's so goofy. Like, <laughs> there's certain shots where like the characters are moving really quickly, but it shows them like stationary not moving their legs and it's like a stop motion thing and they're zooming it <laughs> i think it's really funny <laughs> oh this movie's so good i love it i i know for me for dislikes uh, i kind of want to revisit something you said there stallman where the first watch through is just really difficult um i found that so many times it was hard to follow the plot it, partially because of the the manner in which it filmed i mean it's it's super jumpy it's it's shaky like it is it's it's i mean it's done that way intentionally to make you feel uncomfortable but for the most part it's just like okay if you've ever seen the office um when uh gabe is trying to show the office the the horror movie but it's just unsettling images at a rapid pace like that's kind of what this movie is on your first watch through um i while the horror in it, the the body horror is really good. Like I, I got through the end of this movie and went, okay, there's no way this was a plot, right? Like I don't remember anything that happened. I just remember metal coming out of different body parts. Like that's that's just really all you get. I I gotta mention real quick, my favorite part of this movie. This dude has a drill for a dick, and it is incredible. <laughs> that is the best part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I I just mine's actually at the end when the two guys like combine and they're just like let's turn this world into rust. I, also a good part of the movie. I I just like it it's it's a really difficult watch because if you're just going for the shock value of body horror, you could have done it in 10 minutes. <laughs> but it, because it's so long, you know there's a plot and it just kind of like it almost drags because you don't know what's going on. Like I I did not find enough enjoyment in this that I will ever watch it a second time. Like I just just wasn't my fucking thing. But I almost want to watch it a second time so that I understand why the fuck we watched it instead of Mike just like steaming piles of metal. Like <laughs> I just I I didn't get any purpose from watching really. Well, that's all right. We'll watch the sequel. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus fuck. Um. Really though, that was like. I, I don't have a long list of dislikes only because I didn't get much of the plot. It just kind of was scenes of body horror. Like, that was just it. I, Stalin, I did hit it up. What you, what you got? Oh, uh, dislikes? Um, yeah. I will say that um, due to, like, the various, like, nonlinear ways how it tells its story, because uh, it does jump around a couple uh times when it when they're like uh you know explaining what exactly is going on uh and with like the extremely shocking imagery that is within this movie it is hard to kind of like pick up the plot off of like a first viewing which could be off-putting for like a lot of uh, people watching that and that's the only complaint i really have because like i just I'm I'm with Mike. I I, I love this movie. <laughs> yeah, I I don't really have any dislikes either. Like I remember the first time I watched this movie. There's a streamer I watch that uh does 
these kind of like late night movie movie viewing sometimes and he picked this movie one night and i was just dumbfounded <laughs> like what the hell am i watching yeah. and after that i i knew that i had to watch this movie again and here we are See, the sequel's pretty damn good too and i i want to watch the third one as well i think my only complaint is i think that there's it's like a minor complaint that maybe like some scenes drag a little bit and there is kind of that confusing nature to it where there's just things that happen and you're just too confused to really kind of pick up what's going on, I guess. But I think that's a feature, honestly. <laughs> like, I, I don't simulator. I don't I really don't have anything negative to say about this movie. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Well, a um, couple movies for you guys, then, to go check out if you're into weird, goofy shit that makes you question your life. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Mike, for both hosting the podcast and the double feature for the movies. Um, to catch up with us, you can hop in the Discord. Uh, we watch more movies there. Always some fucking weird shit. Uh, or some dumb shit. Sometimes both. Um, you can also catch each of us individually on Twitch. Stalman at Traductus, Mike at Xenon756, myself at Ted Green Eagles. Um, thanks for hanging, and we'll see you here next time. See ya.